In Creo Simulate, you can automatically detect shell pairs in order to reduce your element count. If I were to try to analyze this entire assembly, it would probably choke my computer, so I want to save on elements and nodes wherever I can. Let's take a look at how to do that. I'm going to open up an individual part. Let's left click on it and then use the open icon from the mini toolbar. And this part is relatively thin compared to its other dimensions, and it also has constant thickness. Let's measure how thick it is. I will go to the analysis tab, and then from the measure command, let's measure a length. I'm going to zoom in and measure this edge here. I can see that it is about 0.3 inches. Let's close out of the dialog box. And to enter into Creo Simulate, I will go to the Applications menu, and then Simulate. And first, let's see how many elements would be in this model. I will go to the Refine Model tab, and here we have the Automatic Geometric Element Measure. Let me click on it, and let's create all the different elements, and let it go for a few seconds. And so there you can see the mesh quite a lot of elements. I see that it is a total of 22,000 plus elements in this model. Again, this is unnecessarily large for what I want to do. Let's close the meshing dialog box. Close. No, I'm not going to save the mesh. And then we can go to the shell pair dropdown. And here's the option to automatically detect shell pairs in the model. I will click on it, and here we have the component selected. We're using the geometry analysis, and then for the characteristic thickness, I will click inside of here, and you want to specify sort of like a maximum length or thickness that above which you do not want to generate shell pairs. And so I'll choose one inch as the value, and then click the start option. And then if we take a look in the model tree underneath idealizations, there we have shell pairs. And it looks like it automatically generated 20 different shell pairs. If you click on them, you can see where the shell pairs were generated. I'm going to use the shift key and see that the entire model was idealized with shell elements. So that's good. Let's take a look at the mesh now. I'll go to the auto gem command. And actually, before I even go to that, Let's go to the drop down list and I want to show you underneath settings. This is where you can specify what kind of elements will be created. And by default, it will generate quads and tries. In other words, three sided and four sided shell elements. If you go to the limits tab, you can see the default settings for the allowable angles and the maximum aspect ratio and the maximum edge turn. It's generally recommended that you don't change the values inside of here. Let's click the OK button in order to close out of the settings dialog box and go back to the automatic geometric element measure and then click the create button. And you can see that the mesh generated very quickly. Let's move the summary dialog box out of the way. You can see that in this particular situation, the mesh is extremely crude. It only generated looks like a total of 59 elements. We got 32 tries and 27 quads. You might say, you know what, this is just a little too crude for the size of the model that I'm analyzing. So you can always apply additional controls to the mesh. I'm closing out of the meshing dialog box. If you go to the control drop down list, two of the ones that I like to use are edge distribution. So you can specify the number of elements or nodes that should be on a given edge. But in this particular situation, I think it'll probably just be easiest to specify a maximum element size. And let's specify a maximum element size of 10 inches. And for the references, it wants me to select individual surfaces. But if you go to the references drop down list, you can change that to components so that it automatically grabs the entire part. Let's click the OK button. And here you can see a little icon on the screen indicating that we have applied a control. If you don't want to see any of the different icons, you can go to this icon for simulation display in the in graphics toolbar. Oh, here we have 
the display auto gem controls. Let me click the OK button. That way it is no longer visible. Anyhow, now let's take a look at the mesh that we'll get. Let's click on the auto gem icon and then click the create button and move the summary dialog box out of the way. And I can see from the dialog box on the right that a total of 646 elements were created with that mesh control. And I'm happy with this for analyzing my model. So we ended up getting huge savings by using shell elements instead of the solid elements. We went from over 22,000 elements down to under 700. So that's how you can use the auto detect shell pairs command.